music praise party. Let's go. TCM Radio, where ministry and music meets demand. Welcome to Your Motivational Moment with Tamala Odom on TCMRadioStation.com. Hello, Radio World. Thank you for tuning in to Your Motivational Moment. I am your host, Tamala Odom. I want to first and foremost thank you all for participating last week in the global prayer that we talked about. There was a person who called in um, two weeks ago, and she mentioned to us that she was thinking of an initiative where she wanted other people to pray with her in regards to the youth and their, the violence that's happening in America. So thank you all for tuning in and helping her with that endeavor. And thank you for calling and emailing me to let me know that you did participate in the global prayer. And we want to make sure that we continue to find out ways in which we can help become a solution to the issues that are coming when we talk about youth and the violence that's happening all over the world. So thanks again for participating in that endeavor. And we hope again that we're going to continue on when it comes to uh, global prayer. All right, so what I want to do is I want to talk about something this evening that I think strikes home with a lot of folks is in regards to an issue that I think that if you are an African-American male, this is something that should strike home for you. And I want to share with you some statistics first off. Now, we're talking about African-American men, and I want to find out from you who are listening, what is really going on when it comes to our African-American teenagers. So we know that statistics say that they are really plummeting when it comes to education, first and foremost. According to statistics, between 41 and 47 percent of African-American males graduate from high school each year. So less than half of the African-American students who are seniors across the United States will graduate from high school each year. Now, the the national average is 78%. So as you can see, the graduation of African Americans is so significantly lower. And that's a huge gap. And I think that's something that we cannot allow to continue to, to happen without us paying any notice to this. Again, I want to share with you some more statistics. According to the National Student Clearinghouse Study for Consortium of Chicago School Boards, 22% of black males who begin a four-year college degree graduate in six years. Only 22% graduate. The rest of them drop out. Also, according to the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, the net worth of an African-American family is $6,100 every year. That's the annual Income, according to the Bureau, Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, while the net worth of a uh, Caucasian or white family is $67,000 per year. So that is a huge difference from $6,100 to $67,000 annual salary in the household. In Chicago, only 30% of African American males graduate from high school, and of these 30%, Three percent of them obtain a bachelor's degree by the time they are 25. And if you think about some of the the larger cities in New York, if you also look at some of the larger cities in Florida, if you look at Detroit and Baltimore, the percentages are even lower than 30 percent and they're lower than three percent. So I'm going to open up the phone lines. I really want to hear from you. What is going on? You heard these statistics. I'm sure this is not something that you just heard for the first time. But we have to really take a moment and sit back and really think about this because a solution has to come about relatively soon or our African-American men are really going to be in trouble if they're not in trouble right now. So I want you to give me a call here at the studio, 708-808-7662. Again, the phone number is 708-808-7662. And I want to hear from you. What do you think is really going on with the African-American teenage male what's going on we know that when we talk about our teenage girls we know that the majority of their issue is teenage pregnancy we know that a lot of times their success lies on the fact that they may have children at an early age so because of that they're unable to find employment or go to complete their schooling because they may not have adequate babysitting or daycare provision so we understand that So when it comes to the African-American teenage male, what do you think is going on? Because according to these statistics, 
there is something that we have to pay close attention to. There has to be a root uh, to this problem. So give us a call here at the studio. Again, that phone number is 708-808-7662. Again, the phone number is 708-808-7662. Now, I know that the majority of the folks that do call in are women, and I want our, our women to call in as normal, but I really want to hear from some of our male listeners, not just African Americans, I think that if you are a male, you probably could have something that you could share to enlighten our audience about this area, uh, the subject that we're talking about this evening. So give us a call. I really want to hear what do you feel is really going on with the state of the African American teenager in America? Give us a call here at the studio, 708 808 7662. Okay, so. I share with you some statistics, and of course, if you listen to this show every Monday, you know I come all the time with stats, because I like to be able to prove what I'm going to say, because after the show, I get a lot of emails about what I talk about, so I like to take you to the numbers. This is not me. This is not something I thought of and concocted. I'm just sharing with you the numbers, and I always like to share with you the source in which I get these numbers, because I want you to be able to go back to that source and verify it uh, for yourself if you need to. So I want to give you some more stats as you're getting your thoughts together in let's see here in 2000 65 percent of african-american male high school dropouts were in their 20s and they were jobless due to the fact that they were unable to find work either they weren't looking for work or because they were incarcerated this was in 2000 65 percent of african male african-american males high school age who had dropped out were jobless due to the fact that they were unable to find a job, maybe because they did not have a high school diploma. They weren't looking for a job, or they were incarcerated. Now, in 2004, that number jumped up from 65% to 72% compared to white students, which was 34%, and for Hispanic students, it was only 19%. So... Again, there's something there that we need to pay close attention to. So, again, if you're listening to this show, I know this is a heated topic because I'm looking here (laughs) at my email (laughs) as I'm talking about this. And I want you all to, and I appreciate you emailing to share your comments, but this will be a good topic, I think, for you if you do have an opinion or comment that you give us a call here at the studio, 708-808-7662. Okay, we're going to stop now because we have a caller. Carla, what do you think? What is going on with our African-American teenage male? What's the problem? Hi, good evening. Hello there. I just, my comment is that I think that the problem starts in the home. Okay. We have some parents that do the very best to carry what they have to work with. But in so many of our homes, you have the absent father, and some time the mother is also absent. Uh, it's so much going on, on in homes. You have the parents that's on drugs. Not in every case, but in too many cases. And I think it's not just, yeah, the school system is inadequate. Yeah, there's a lot of issues, but I think the most important issue is the home. Because if the, if the parent was actually doing what they should do in the home, they would also make sure that the school was doing their job. If the parent was uh, visible, and, you know, a concern. Mm-hmm. So I think we can blame the schools, we can blame somebody else, but actually I feel that you can trace the problem back to the home. You know, it, it, um, the schools are not perfect, mm-hmm. neighborhoods are not, are not perfect. All this could uh, reflect the home. Mm-hmm. Our neighborhoods reflect the home. Mm-hmm. Our schools reflect the home. All of that comes from the home. So I think that is our main problem is the home, the parenting. I mean, children that not did. They have no parenting. They grow up like weeds on their own. Wow. That's what I think our main issue is. So, so with that being said, so we know that it sounds as if you're saying that it, it starts in the home because, there, as you say, they're growing up similar to weeds where they're just kind of wild doing their own thing. Right. So there isn't any parenting. Mm-hmm. So you have teachers that are providing structure for our youth. So why isn't that working? But how much care must a teacher, a teacher do on a part-time basis? Okay. The children be full-time parenting. Mm-hmm. A, a teacher, you know, that's doing the, doing the uh, school hours and, and no weekend. Mm-hmm. They need something that's consistent. So I think that's the issue. They need, uh, the, we need to first reach the parents. Okay. So I, have to, I have to tell you, I want to say a lot of our parents, uh, I have to say, are ignorant. 
Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, you you try to talk to them about school, high school education, they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Even with the pregnancy, they have the children, they keep having children. Now, anyone can make a mistake. But they have five and seven children with no father. If the if the first two is difficult, I have some more. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you know, but we got to first reach the parents. Right. So what I think so they what you're saying is a, is a right, I, and I hear you what you're saying. I think this just as you're talking, I think I'm thinking of so many other show topics that we certainly should address on your motivational moment, especially the one when it comes to teenage pregnancy and the one where you mentioned where after they have one child, it seems as if it's consistent where, you know, there's two and three and four maybe to follow. So I appreciate your comments. And that's supposed to be sure poverty. Mm -hmm. You can't take care of two if you have five. That's, that's sure poverty. Sure. And I'm, I'm a young uh, male. I did raise that young female. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Which is, yeah, absolutely another show topic that we certainly should address. So I agree, yeah. I thank you for your comments, and I think that it's important that we do look at the household. We do look at who's raising our children and or lack of them being raised and how that's really playing a role in what we see, especially when you're listening to the statistics that I'm sharing over the air. This isn't something yeah, that we want to take lightly because this is where we are right now, present day, 2012. So what's going to happen in 2013? These children are going to be in charge shortly. Mm -hmm. this, this, is our, this is our future, and that is scary. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you for your comments, and thank you for listening to our sure. show this evening. Sure. Okay, very good. So I want to just some, some of you are out there that listen to this show, and I know you have comments because this is a pretty popular topic and I'm sure you want to express your opinions over the air. If I have time, I'm going to read some of the comments that are coming to me by email. Um, and then maybe some of the ones that are being inboxed to me by Facebook. But if you do have a comment or about our topic this evening, we're talking about what is really going on with the state of the African-American teenage male. What's going on with the state of them? There's so much that we can point the finger at, but what is really the, the core of the issue if you have a comment, give us a call here at the studio, 708-808-7662. Again, the phone number is 708-808-7662. Okay, so let me share with you some more statistics while you're getting your thoughts together because, again, I see that some of you are, this is a pretty good topic. I see a lot of comments are coming in um, about what you think about this. So here's some uh, more information that I want to, to share with you. Um, there was a, I want to share with you a, a video clip from a CBS report. And in the CBS report, it talks about the opposite of what we're talking about now, where it talks about the African-American um, male teenager who is successful in the classroom, which is a rarity. You don't find a lot of African-Americans that are males or African-Americans in general that are successful in the classroom. And this is a clip where it talks about the statistics that I've shared with you, and it also goes into more detail, giving you more statistics. But it also talks about uh, opportunities that are out there and available for African-American teenagers, males, that are looking to move forward and to become successful. So I'm hoping that by listening to this clip and hearing this student, that it is some kind of way motivating or encouraging for those who are maybe listening or know of people or students or youth that are not as successful as they should be. Maybe this could be an enlightenment for them. So take a listen to this clip. Academy of Mathematics and Science in South LA is one of the top high schools in the country. And senior Daniel Caesar is one of the top students. A average, ambitious, he wants to be a psychiatrist. I'm looking at Berkeley and Stanford as my top schools. But a troubling sign of the times. Achieving black male students like Daniel are increasingly rare in American schools. The overall academic achievement of African American males was appallingly low, not only in cities, but nationwide. By fourth grade, only 12% of black male students read at or above grade level, while 38% of white males do. By eighth grade, it falls to just 9% of black males, 33% for whites. Black male students are almost twice as likely as white males to drop out of school. And in some big American cities, the dropout rate is around 50%. 
In some South LA neighborhoods, this seems more common than this. Black males now make up only 5% of the college enrollment nation, nation, nationally, but 36% of the prison population. Researchers say this isn't just a crisis affecting African Americans, this crisis affects all Americans. Dropouts cost taxpayers more than $8 billion annually in public assistance programs like food stamps. It costs more than $25,000 to incarcerate an inmate for a year, but only about $14,000 a year for a student to attend community college. Researchers call these dismal numbers a call to action for scholars across the country to study this problem and come up with real solutions. The problem can't be quarantined. It's not as if the problems of black males will stay in black communities. Uh, these things metastasize across the body politic. They spread out like a cancerous cell, and they began to impact and affect others. How many of you are going to go to college? Daniel and others in the self-proclaimed nerd herd at Cam High in South L.A. plan to beat the odds. I just push myself to make sure that I get there and that the generation behind me can look up to people like me. Hoping to reverse this pattern of failure. Bill Whitaker, CBS News. So if you were listening to that clip, there were several statistics that were shared. And there was even, you heard about the nerd herd, and you have just a, a small population of kids that are classified as nerds that are looking past high school and looking to better themselves as far as education is concerned. So again, I really wanted to share that clip because I want others who are listening who may not feel, because if you hear all the time, you hear the, the bad statistics, and you always see in your neighborhood that it is practically impossible to be successful in the classroom and you don't have a role model, then what do you have to set your hopes on? So, again, I hope that even though you heard the negative side of it in the clip, that you hear that piece of it where you have those African-American males that are looking to better themselves and are moving forward in their education. Now, I want to share this with you. I shared that clip before we aired this evening with 25 African-American males. I shared this clip with them. I wanted them to, to check it out because I wanted them to hear the statistics and what's being said about them because you find that most people don't see the negative within themselves. Of course, you always think positive of yourself, so you may not think that the, your current lifestyle is all that bad. So I want them to be able to hear what the masses are saying as far as the statistics are concerned, but I also wanted to share with them as you can hear in this clip, this one African-American young man who is moving forward. So these are 25 African-American males that have either dropped out of high school, who are currently in high school and have disciplinary issues, or they're in school currently, they're going every day. However, they have issues because they're underperforming in the classroom. So this is just 25 men, young men that I just got together in a room and I showed them this clip and I wanted to share with you their comments. Now, one of the comments says, I don't like school. I never wanted to go to school. I want to make money doing my rap thing. That was the first comment from these African-American males. And these are the ones that statistics are pointing at. Second comment, that's good for him, but we don't have teachers at my school that care if we make it or not. Third comment that came out of that room is, he probably goes to an all-white school. So that, that's, a, that's a major concern there. And fourth comment that came out of that room was, I'm in a good school, but I don't go because it's boring and my teachers don't like me. And the fifth comment was, I probably would have done good in school, but I kept waking up late. That's why I just stopped going. So 25 African-American teenagers in a room and this is what they think of their future. I don't like school. I ain't never going to go. I want to make money doing my rap thing. Or I don't think that my teachers care. Or if an African-American male is doing well in the classroom, it's probably because he goes to an all-white school. Now, to me, those comments were more alarming than the statistics that I read because statistics can be changed, but it's tougher. It's more of a challenge to change somebody's perception, especially of themselves. Because to me, when I, I listen to these comments, it shows me that 
and I, because I pose a question to you, what do you think the issue is? I think it's a self-esteem issue. I think that just from the 25 African-American teenagers that I polled, they don't feel entitled to success. They feel where they are in life is what they deserve. They feel that if you are white, then you possibly deserve better. And if you have an opportunity to attend a school where there is all white people, then you have just opened yourself up to better opportunities. Where do they get this mentality from? Why do they feel that they're second-class citizens? Why do they feel that the only way to be successful as an African-American male is to be a rapper? And I'm not knocking the fact that there's opportunities for success or to make money as a rapper, but there's so many other opportunities that are out there that it's obvious that our men, African-American men, don't feel that they have an opportunity to even discover because of who they are. So again, that was more enlightenment for me to hear their comments. This came directly from their mouths versus those statistics. So I guess we need to figure out a plan as to how we can restore the confidence. How can we restore the faith? How can we restore the esteem of the African-American. I'm sure that if you talk to some African-American females, they may have the same sentiments. So I know that we don't have a lot of time left in our program this evening, but I, I hope that, that what we talked about so far has really been eye-opening because I think it's very easy to point fingers and say it's the parents' fault, it's the teacher's fault, it's the politician's fault. But while we're pointing fingers, we have a generation of youth that are dying inside. And they're committing crimes. And the, you find that they're behind bars. They're slowly dying behind bars. Or they're outside of the bars. And they're free and they're dying because they have no direction. And as we talked about in a previous show, most of them are illiterate. They're functioning illiterates. So could you imagine the state of America in the next five to ten years when these are folks that are expected to be productive citizens, when these are the folks that are expected to be able to earn a living to take care of themselves, where these are the folks that should be able to give back to their communities. Instead, they are still dependent upon their communities. This, this should really be eye-opening to you. So, um, again, I wanted to share this with you. And um, thank you for the comments that were given to us um, by Facebook and um, by email this evening. I did, just didn't want to read them, not because I didn't feel they were valid, but I really wanted people to say in their own voice how they felt about this topic because I think that this is something that we all need to have a hand in trying to make it better. So in the meantime, thank you for tuning into your motivational moment. And don't forget when you have an opportunity take a peek at my website, which is www.runtheraceto.com. And on the site, it gives you the latest information on the lectures on my book, which is called Run the Race, A Guide to Successful Living. It also gives you updates as to where I am across the U.S. And it gives you just an opportunity to share your thoughts. You can leave comments about the book, or you can also leave comments about our show, Your Motivation Moment, that broadcasts every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on TCM Radio Station. So check out the site. Let me know what you think. Um, thank you for those folks who have already checked out the site and left comments and posted comments on the site. So thanks again for checking it out. And feel free to share with other folks that you feel could benefit from some motivation and some encouragement on a daily basis. And in the meantime, you can pick up my book on, on Amazon.com or you can check it out on BarnesandNoble.com. And I assure you that if you are in need of some motivation that this is a book that you will enjoy reading. It's a small read. It's a short read. It's, it's about 100 pages. So I wanted it to be something that you could read and feel the need to read over and over and over again until the concepts in the book have become a part of you. And once you have a chance to read the book, feel free to leave me a review at etibooks at yahoo.com. Again, that's etibooks 
at yahoo.com. And also, if you would like to reach me off air, you can email me at oeschicago at yahoo.com. Again, that's oeschicago at yahoo.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Oldham Educational Services, OES, or you can find me on Twitter at Run the Race TO. And again, you can check me out every Monday right here on TCN Radio Station every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So thanks again for everyone who is tuned in to your motivational moment this evening. And always remember, you only get one life to live, and it's up to you to make the most of it. Good night, everybody. You have been listening to Your Motivational Moment with Tamala Odom. Tune in every Monday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on TCMRadioStation.com. You can also visit us at www.oeschicago.com. Thank you for listening to our broadcast. What's up, everybody? This is Mark Hubbard. Check out my new singer, Ain't It A Wonder. Ain't It A Wonder. Available on iTunes, CD Baby, and Amazon. And you can hear 